Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another exciting episode of Music Therapy and Motivation. I am your host, Gino Black. Thanks for tuning in. Today, I am honored. I got a special guest for us tonight. This gentleman has made significant contributions in my hometown, Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, music, entertainment. He is just a motivational force. He is involved with the community there. Everybody loves him. And we want to sit down and talk to him. You know, I haven't seen his brother in so long. So I just reached out on social media. And I said, hey, come on the podcast. Let's chop it up. I'm here. This is Gino Black, everybody. Music, therapy, and motivation. Uh, I have a special guest today. This gentleman's name is Butch Gibson. He is a uh, founder, in my opinion, a founder and a pioneer in the Cincinnati hip-hop music scene. He is a DJ. He is a motivational force. Uh, I believe he works in the education system. Uh, I Look, let's just get into it. Butch Gibson, welcome to the show. How you doing, brother? Uh, thanks for having me. It is an honor and a, an esteemed pleasure to just to be chopping it up with Power Blast Worldwide. Indeed, indeed, <laughs> man. It's been it's been a while. It's been a while, a long while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you you ski daddled up out of here. <laughs> I had to. I had yeah. to. I had to yeah. elevate, man. I had to elevate. You yeah, know? I, I I heard some episodes. Heard you some did. episodes. Heard I did. Episodes. Yeah, yes, yeah. I did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's it was heavy. It was heavy. It was heavy yeah. to me because it was unexpected. But uh, let's let's talk about you, man. Let's talk about you. And, and and if it slides into some other lanes around along the way, we'll see what we can do. Tell right. the people, tell the listeners uh, who you are and what you do. My name is Butch Gibson. I've been around in this whole Cincinnati area for forty plus years. Um, in, in the in the music industry, sort of the entertainment right. industry, right? Um, I I have been DJing for a long time. I've been DJing since nineteen eighty four. Okay. Um, I have I have dabbled in most, if not all, of the local radio stations here. I did a little stint on WCIN. I, mm. I interacted with folks on WBLZ when it was around. I remember. Um, yeah, and then I, I did a long, fairly long stint, six years at WAIF, what radio is meant to be, all volunteer operated community radio, and then another six years at WIZF, our local hip hop and R and B station, mm -hmm. um, and um, then also just been kind of freelance, where you know mobile mobile jock and and worked in various capacities at some of the bigger festivals around town day and mm -hmm. festival was where we got married uh juneteenth festival uh when it was in daniel drake park and mm -hmm. black family reunion the okay. midwestern regional black family reunion celebration for the past 35 years so now, wow. I, I i, I kind of been around i'm i normally work in the young adults pavilion i am no longer a young adult. <laughs> I, um, see <laughs> I see you there. Yeah. Gan Gandalf the Great. <laughs> yeah, ah, I appreciate that. No shave November or whatever, whatever month yeah. this is. Gotcha, gotcha. But uh, yeah, you know, I just I just been around. So um it's 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 good to be around too. You know gotcha. I mean? It yeah, hey, it's good to see you, bro. You look healthy. Hey, Laid I'm eyes trying, on man. you via yes. Zoom, laying eyes on you, you look healthy. <laughs> um I, I always see you in the mix on social media um what what was the original inspiration that inspired you to want to be a dj i know that's a cliche question but we got to ask yeah yeah um I, I think a lot of times in in some of the um some of the situations that i that i wound up being in just being young being in parties and stuff like that and just hearing the music play and, and seeing how people respond to it it just made me want to be a involved in some capacity mm -hmm. and I, I was never really a a, a b-boy or anything like that and never really got into graffiti and and not that i necessarily had to do a multiple choice of the elements of hip-hop right but it, it seemed to be a, a low cost of admission mm -hmm. to get into get involved gotcha. and and it, like twenty dollars and i bought a turntable Okay. You know, and and the same is true in some respect today. That is, it is a fairly low cost of admission, especially to get into the DJ kind right. of thing. But mm -hmm. that was where I got some inspiration, uh, and I guess from a, a Malcolm McLaren twelve inch single. I think it was Buffalo Gals. Buffalo Gals were around yeah. the outside. Yeah, yeah. and uh. on that on that cover, 
there was a, a picture of this thing and it was a it was a GLI mixer. Mm. And that was just that made me start questioning what what is that thing? And then just hearing that song and um also just I, I'm all long winded with it, but I will say one of my major inspirations might have been just an actual individual, which was Michael White, also okay. known as DJ Silk. DJ to, Silk. Yep. He used to DJ at the uh at the club just was walking distance. It was a bar, walking distance mm-hmm. from my house. Okay. And I remember I just wanted to play music and record songs to to play in my car. I wanted to have a nice cassette. Right. And so that kind of got me seeking like out equipment. The, were you doing like the mixtapes, literal mixtapes back well, then? I only did one, but okay. yeah, I did one called the audio collage. Okay. But Silk was the one that actually, he didn't even understand my question. So if you got two channels, you got turntable here, turntable here. I wanted to know how you make those two records play together. Right, right, I didn't right. understand. He didn't understand my question, but eventually he told me it was a mixer. Gotcha. And once he gave me that information, then I went out and bought a mixer and mm-hmm. just kind of went on from there. Yeah, I think uh, my first mixer was a Radio Shack mixer. Something mm-hmm. real dirty mm-hmm. and cheap. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if you remember this or not. You had touched on a couple of the stations you had worked at. I don't know if you remember this or not, but I originally met you when you were doing some work with uh, the WAIF, uh, mm-hmm. 88.3, is it WAIF? Yeah, yes. Okay. Yep. Yep. You were doing some work there, but we met, it was a community meeting for something that was going on in the community. Um, I think it was a couple of city councilors, there was something going on. And we met and I found out that you were a DJ. I gave you my first tape. Mm-hmm. It, was, uh, it, was, uh, it was prequel to the, the debut tape that I put out called Censor Natty. Mm, but, okay. but it was one of the tracks that was on there. And you were the first DJ to play that song. Oh, dig that. Yeah. I, I, and was, that, that. That sounds typical. Yeah, that sounds were, typical. Yeah. You helped me break that tape. Uh, the song at the time was called "Holding Back," and it was one mm. of a uh, one of the cuts on a six song tape that I put out right around the time of uh, the Maplethorpe controversy. Oh, yeah! <laughs> wow. So I capitalized on it and called the <laughs> tape "Censor Natty" mm, mm, and, okay. and pushed it. Yeah, and it, that tape did well, man. But yeah, shouts out to you for playing that. You played that on the radio. Oh, oh and hey, man, my, every, my everybody else got hit to it. You know, mm, e- even in those odd time slots at that station, everybody was involved. So I like yeah. that. That that was yeah. a real community around that time. Yeah, but, that uh, was that was a real fight back then. Mm-hmm. Just uh, um, I was hungry, eager, angry in some mm-hmm. respect. Um, so WIF is is really what radio was meant to be. It's it's a, it's a you can just do your own thing over there. Yeah, but and depending upon how how much of your thing you want to do or how right how you work it it can right. it can be whatever you want it to be yeah and yeah. and I'll, I'll say this from david wa my main show was 58 minutes mm-hmm. and if i remember correctly 7 a.m to 7 58 yeah and then we had to yeah. turn it off and let there was a, a high school uh wjvc mm-hmm. joint vocational school or whatever it was, right. it was scarlet oaks and okay. they would come on at eight o'clock and they actually squeezed in the time. Supposedly, they would cut off at seven mm-hmm. and then be an hour off the air and then let this other station come on the same frequency. OK. But when I put in my application, they squeezed it. They said, well, we don't really have to cut off an hour ahead of time. We just give them two minutes. So right. that allowed me to be in that time slot. Okay. And I worked that 58 minutes to death. Ah, uh, yeah, I remember, and, and, man. Hey, and let me say, <laughs> from that fifty-eight minute time slot, I got a gold record hanging on the wall at home. I got a nice. platinum record hanging on the wall at home. Nice. We got involved with the the Day and Eden, the Juneteenth Festival, and the and all the Black Family Union. All those things came from stem from being at eighty-eight. Fifty-eight minutes a week. That's man. that's that's the grind, bro. Yes, you, sir. You had a vision and you executed it, and and that's why you're you're so. Uh, well loved and renowned in the city. Um, oh, you're too kind, sir. Thank no, you are, man. You are, you are. And and then it's just, you know, you know, you've heard my my conversations about the city. So gonna, <laughs> uh, all right, let's get back yeah. to this. Yeah. Uh tell me a little bit about the uh, Midwest DJ coalition and how you got involved with that. Well, I have to pay homage to Chris Paul. Chris okay. Paul made a post on his Facebook page uh, uh, many years ago. Wow, it's probably been over 10 years ago. And what he talked about is is the kind of thing that happens in Cincinnati and maybe just mm-hmm. all over that 
you always have, and I just use this term loosely, you always have some $50 DJ somewhere mm -hmm. that's going to try to undercut you. Undercut everybody. Talk yeah. about you and say why he needs that $50 and that you don't need whatever you might be asking for. $55. Mm -hmm. He just want to undercut you and get the gig. And Chris Paul talked about that. He also talked about how uh, the club owners and promoters will do the same thing, that they will slide over to the $50 DJ. Like, hey, man, I'm I'm paying this much. Can you do it for this little? Right. Uh, and okay. said part of the problem was communication that we didn't have communication with each other. So he he mm -hmm. put together a meeting at Club Zero downtown in Cincinnati. I couldn't attend, but I sent a couple of people. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just kind of funny that um, over time, things evolved and changed and the, the organization kind of grew. And we had, a, we had a little heyday. We got about 110 members all over Ohio, Kentucky, and Indiana. And the, and the key was just that we communicate with each other. Mm -hmm. And things have kind of cooled off. I'd say cooled off quite a bit. Mm -hmm. But over the years, it was a really powerful, and I say still is a powerful organization, just for the fact that we communicate with each other. Right. So you, you know? guys kind of make it sure that it's sort of unionized so that you all are charging kind of similar rates so that any of the promoters or, or bookers can't undercut you guys? Is that is that how that worked? Or Not necessarily, because we, we have varied opinions on what to charge. Okay. And um, some folks are adamant and saying, man, y'all charge too much. I just, I just love DJing, man. It's fun. I just want to play music. Right. And I mean, that's cool. But at least for me, I can't speak for everybody else. Mm -hmm. um, DJ Vader. Okay. DJ Vader just said a simple thing. Man, this equipment costs a lot of money. And as it simple does. as that, like, I, let me re kind of recoup on my investment. Right. It does. And, and, and in that respect, and then for me, like, I'm, I'm tired, man. I'm old. I'm about to be 60, man. I, <laughs> you know, you got to, I, I don't want to come out for $50, you know, right. like, I, I just stay it. home. It's right, I'll stay home, man. Stay home and drink a beer for fifty dollars, man. I'm cool. Oh, 50 fifty dollars was thirty <laughs> years ago, and that was even like maybe. <laughs> yeah, and, <laughs> maybe and now. But but we, the the big thing is that it, we at least we communicate. Okay, and that's the thing. So if you mm -hmm. if you got a resident DJ at wherever X Y Z club, right, and then the promoter goes to talk to DJ X Y Z or mm -hmm. whatever that what I say X Y Z A B C club A B C. Anyway, if you right. if if you talk to a I different DJ and say, "Hey, come over here at my club," then we get in the group like, "Hey, is somebody a resident DJ over there?" Yeah, I am. Well, you know, the owner was over here in my ear trying to, and you, and then you gotcha. know, we just we have that gotcha. communication. Yeah, okay. try to shut that down. And I mean, you know, it's a free market or whatever, so folks can do whatever they want. Mm -hmm. uh, what? Uh, buy low, sell high. Yeah. Or whatever, you know, the, whatever mm -hmm. you've got to do to make that profit. We understand that, but maybe just be upfront with it. Yeah. Maybe we yeah. need contracts, a contract for a term. You know, I'm going to DJ here for a year. You can't break that contract unless. I think that should be done anyway. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it's an engagement. That's a long term engagement, but that should be done anyway. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I never booked anything for anybody without contracts. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't I don't even care if it was a free show. We still had our writer. And we did what we had to do as far as those, because I just don't believe people's words all the time. Yeah, I believe, yeah, I believe true that. actions and behaviors. So that mm -hmm. contract and, and that goes into kind of the frustration of with me, because yeah. I was I was strictly business back in the day. Yeah. And ev everybody wasn't playing that. Didn't want to sign the paperwork, didn't want to sign the contracts, didn't want right. to learn how to do publishing and copyright. So, you know, that that's yeah. that, 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 that. Let's get back to you. <laughs> <laughs> um, Let's see. Um, so in addition to that, uh, you're involved with a couple of other groups, too, right? Uh, like uh, DJ things or no? Um, or no. Yeah, that that's that's the main one. There are some spinoffs from there. There's the mm -hmm. um, um, well, of course, there's the cool kids. The cool kids are mm -hmm. like the if, if the Midwestern Dish Jockey Coalition is the umbrella. Mm -hmm. Then under that umbrella, there are other smaller umbrellas okay, that, that's that, what may, I'm thinking of. Okay. that may encompass other DJs like Vader and and DJ Guy West and Mike Drop and DJ Stank. And oh man, I'm I'm probably missing out somebody because the uh, the cool kids are our army. 
Okay. Uh, <laughs> Shout out they, to Guy West. Shout out to Guy West. Yeah, yeah, most deaf. Uh, and I used to work with Guy West. Okay. Doing tech support. I do tech support at Cincinnati Public Schools right now. Okay, gotcha. But um, the the cool kids are are really uh, one of the the major groups that may be under the Midwestern Just Jockey Coalition, gotcha. and th- and that that may not be fair to say. Mm-hmm. Just in a sense that we're all part of the Midwestern Dish Jockey Coalition, but we all got our own thing. Mm-hmm. So the Cool Kids is its is its own entity, and uh, they're doing big things right now. They're really doing a lot, and 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 you know, I'll say that too that this is a great time to be alive. That there is so much going on that I see in Cincinnati that is so amazing. That I, I, I have seen a lot of positive things, lately. you know, and I, I don't I remember seeing it. that yeah. kind of stuff growing up. No. No, and and, and maybe I'm involved with it t- mm-hmm. to a certain extent, but like Vader's doing this stereo 23 last year and stereo 24. It was like 50 DJs mm-hmm. DJing all all down there along the highway. That the Sawyer Point thing. Yep. Tell me a little bit about that. How how was that this year? That that was also amazing. Just that, it, it, just a big old festival, and I'm I'm just in in awe of of that where you have 50 DJs mm-hmm. playing. All day long. I think we started at 10 and might have went until 10. And okay. there were various stages. It had about half a dozen stages. There was a skating rink. There was the main stage with PNG Pavilion. There was the, the tunnel stage. There was a the pickleball stage. All mm. these different stages where you had ongoing music. Different DJs spinning. Different in DJs. Yeah. Wow. It, and it just a whole big old DJ festival. And that that um they've also got a movement called skate downtown cincinnati which is not Mm. necessarily similar but i bring that up because that's a movement that's going on in cincinnati where they're trying to get the outdoor skating rink down there at Mm. sawyer point get that back in action they're trying to put a roof on it they're going to try to put a new sound system down there and just get people skating again Mm -hmm. and what I noticed is that I got a a friend up in Naptown and I noticed they were kind of doing the same thing Come Mm. to find out, they came to visit Cincinnati, Mm. saw what we were doing here, and then they took it up to Naptown, Indianapolis. And in that same spirit, we had a a Vader had the Stereo 23 DJ Festival here, Mm -hmm. and then Naptown had the Naptown, the Indie DJ Festival up there. Mm. And it's just, and we're talking about trying to do a collabo, and it's just, it's amazing. It's positive, real positive stuff. And I, real, I haven't seen that. Stuff. I haven't seen that in the past, but it's it's happening now. That's 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 amazing, man. I, yeah. I, I love to hear positive stuff. Yeah, I, yeah. you know, with the, I noticed that too in the in the um in the hip hop scene with the the new generation of kids that are uh performing for the city with the with the I guess it's called the Blink Festival or something like that. Or oh yeah, yeah. yeah we, and I then they're doing a lot that. doing a lot more stuff on the square. A lot of the younger hip hop artists. Mm, mm-hmm. uh, are kind of tapping in. I'm hearing them uh, a lot of information about MRC, uh, Music Resource Center. Oh, yeah, yeah. And yeah a that's a lot of the spot. kids are teaching the younger kids about hip-hop and and teaching the kids about, I guess they're teaching about the business as well, mm, mm-hmm. how, to, how to learn and try to have a positive impact keeping the kids off the street and stuff like that. Yeah. We, we didn't have anything like that back in the 90s where yeah. we had communal support with funding uh, mm, mm. where we could help each other and and help the younger generation so i do like that i have seen a lot of that and i've heard from a a couple of the uh artists that are doing that mm-hmm. how how do you relate what you see now in the city in terms of the hip-hop community versus the 90s for example from well, what you see. yeah from what i see i'm, I'm a little a little out of touch mm-hmm. but but i can say that a, a lot of times it's it's seemingly easier to be a part of the entertainment industry. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I mentioned before the price of admission for me, it was a $20 turntable and, and, gotcha. and now it's just a smartphone seemingly that, yeah. that, you know, people are accessing social media and able to get whatever it is that their whatever their message is, whatever the music is, whatever their entertainment is, they're able to get it out quickly on Instagram and, TikTok and and everything else with with low cost. So you got a whole lot of low cost marketing and advertising that mm-hmm. folks can do. And I, I see that as a as, as a plus in some ways. And I don't know if that that trickles down to the to the local 
market or mm-hmm. the local like the local venue is Got somebody it. a star on tiktok does that mean they can hop on stage downtown and, and right. be recognized it, it doesn't they, always translate yeah yeah I, yeah I don't think it always translate in that in that fashion um what what it, what has been some um events that you've uh done other than the one we just talked about the dj festival that you've been involved in recently um well we we um i i had been trying to do a a, a similar kind of thing but it was indoors mm-hmm. instead of outdoors which was mm-hmm. a um we did a we tried to do a christmas party we got <laughs> an ice storm came then we did mm-hmm. a summer out of school party um with the same kind of thing multiple dj spinning mm-hmm. um that and some of the skating ring stuff is also just taken off man it's just they they do these pop-up mm-hmm. pop-up skating rinks they got this this weird temporary skating floor mm. it's almost like a uh it's like honeycomb honey like if you look okay. down on it it's like little honeycomb shape and gotcha. then you skate on it it has a it has a certain Probably texture like those, those uh great pads that you find in factories maybe something like that yeah 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 kind of like okay. that yeah you know okay. and then, so they'll block off a, a a whole street a city block between mm-hmm. you know two streets or whatever and set up a a a booth, a DJ booth on one end, and then people just come and skate. So, so th- th- making a comeback. Yeah, yeah, that is, and you know, we got the the guy here, Dylan Morton, that skated in the Super Bowl. Not for me. Yeah, he's a, a young guy, man, and mm-hmm. he's he's on tour. He's all over the world hmm. skating, and so yeah, skating is There's really making Dil- a comeback. Dylan Morton. Yes, I got. And he actually up. just made his his debut this past Saturday. Okay. Um, DJing. Huh. And I was like, "Wait a minute, what you, you man? Come on, you 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 taking over, man? What you doing? You trying to take my job, yo? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he, you? you know he he's doing good things. So it's so I, I promise, man. There's so much this is coming out of Cincinnati that mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, we had we had Jabri, the wise, the wise one. one. Shout out and, to Jabri, the wise one. Yep, yeah, and um, some other acts and groups that may have come out of oh, K yeah. Riley, K Riley, three yeah. from the soul." Oh yeah, so so much that came out, you know, from from back then, but now, you know, maybe it's on the come up because seemingly more and more folks are or more and more things are happening mm-hmm. at least, you know. It's okay. it's a good time, good feeling up here. Good, good, good. So, how active are you now with actually spinning records? Um, well, I just I just did a a little party. What day is this? This is was that yesterday? Mhm yesterday or, or wednesday I, i'm i'm fairly active I, I do something every now and then uh a couple mm-hmm. times a month at least i got a, an event coming up on the the 20th uh i still do wedding receptions i do a lot of what a lot of stuff like that wedding receptions 50th birthday parties stuff like okay. that you know okay. i'm not i'm not actively in the club right but um if anything i've been thinking about a a, a session there's a there's a rink that that wants me to come and spin a roller rink Okay. You know, so okay. that's and I skate too. So that's kind of a combination of, of perfect uh, for you then. Yeah. You know, yeah. Not necessarily a R. Kelly and Jay Z best of both worlds situation, but <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh tell me, tell me a little bit about um like I mentioned earlier, I I I met you. I know I, I can't remember exactly what the event was, but I know that you're involved in the community heavy. Tell me a little bit about your work. Well, for the most part, I have I have tried to get involved with a lot of these different festivals, and and I mentioned the Day and Eden Festival, the Juneteenth Festival, and the the Black Family Union Celebration, and and in some ways I I may be slowing down a little bit, just older, tired, and, and right. sometimes you know shaking shaking your fist, cursing you know, eyes. man, yeah. man, you know, mm-hmm. it's like, I get tired of shaking my fist, right, and 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 I I try to be a I try to be maybe more of a foundation more mm-hmm. of a mentor of sorts yes, yes. and a- as an example I-, I was just talking to a guy last night and i was just trying to give him some some insight and i think that that's that's kind of where i'm at i'm 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 kind of doing the one-on-one mentoring you. i'm i'm and, doing the same thing i feel you on that dig that and and um what happened and, and this is no no real disrespect to anybody and i won't necessarily name names but there was an mm-hmm. event a-, a while ago and it was two day de- two djs on the event mm-hmm. and one of the djs was the only one that had the microphone. <laughs> and so 
later the next day I, I and it was an older guy versus a younger guy and the older mm. guy had the microphone okay. so i i kind of inboxed the younger guys like hey man good job last night but hey make sure that if you if you got a story to tell that you're the one telling it be right. careful about who you let provide the narrative Create for the narrative. you exactly right and it was it, it was kind of cryptic right you know mm -hmm. but i didn't want to i didn't want to approach him that night because i didn't mm -hmm. i didn't want to disturb the peace right they right, got a right. rhythm going have at it mm -hmm. and but then when i saw him I, I i took him aside and you know i just mentioned that like that other person that had the microphone they said just whatever they wanted to say mm -hmm. whether you like it or not it could potentially reflect on your performance correct and if if you're jazzy jeff and you got the fresh prince out there okay you guys, you guys are talking the same talk. <laughs> right yeah. but yeah. if you got somebody else that's your potential competition mm -hmm. and that may just not be saying the same things that you're saying and you're separated right. by decades you just may need to 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 control your narrative so just and i know attention. he's and I know he's a little shy on the mic, but I, I mm -hmm. just wanted to give him that feedback right. and push him to to be more of of himself, so that he stands mm -hmm. out and he and he's not in the shadow of somebody else. To be more assertive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah most definitely. Most not definitely. not rude, but assertive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Write your uh, own story. One hundred percent. Everybody yeah. needs to write their own story. Everybody's too busy telling rumors and lies about everybody else. <laughs> you know what I mean, so man, yeah. Um, Tell me, uh, I read something on your website, and it was uh, something about the Guinness Book of World Records. Oh yeah, yeah. So, so, uh, so I did mention that uh, at home I got the gold record, I got mm -hmm. the platinum record. All that came from '88, and I also have a Guinness Book World Record, mm -hmm. and that came from the largest crowd recorded ever to do the wobble. <laughs> okay, and uh, <laughs> as 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 what as obscure as that might seem you know it was a world record you know um, i don't know exactly I, how many people was it oh man see why you do that why um, you do that i gotta know man i never heard this uh, before a couple of days ago oh man wait a minute i, I want to say it was about oh there it is uh 2241 damn this took place in Cincinnati? Yep. Yep. And it was uh back in 2014. What was the location? Uh it was right on the um the uh, downtown we got Washington Park. Okay. So it was on the north side of Washington Park, which if I'm right, that's Elm and Race, maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. If I remember correct, yeah. And they blocked those streets off. So whatever street that is, which might have been 13th Street, mm -hmm. we blocked that whole block off. And and put one of those um, turnstiles and okay. a, and a clicker so you count the people that come in. Okay, start to wobble, make sure everybody's doing the wobble dance. There was an officiator there, and uh, we made it happen. Damn. Okay. You know? Yeah. Dig, so dig that Guinness Book of World Record holder on here today. Yeah, and and you know you, you you can say it, but then if you go to Guinness and pay them twenty dollars, they'll send you the certificate. So oh, I, pay, I paid my twenty dollars. Like, <laughs> I want that. No doubt. No doubt. <laughs> I would have to as well, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> That's great, man. That's dope. Uh, yeah. I, can say, I can say I talked to a Guinness World Record holder. All right. <laughs> I got bragging rights now. Not only is I'm friends with the DJ, but he holds a Guinness Book World Record. You do. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Also yes, read, I also read something about um, what is it? The closing the health gap center for closing the health gap, health gap. Yeah, that's that's an event um, that it's not necessarily similar to the Black Family Reunion, but they hold it. That that's actually where where the Guinness Book World Record happened. Oh, okay. And, and it's a thing that happens every year. Center for Closing the Health Gap has this health expo, and it's it's really an important piece because mm -hmm. they offer free health screenings. They check your blood pressure. There's a whole lot of health related things that happen at the health expo, mm -hmm. and that you know. With with um with black men out here having some challenges, and it doesn't have to be race related, you know. No, but no, a lot of times no. it seems it, like black men are are more reluctant to go to the doctor. Studies have shown, uh, <laughs> right, that black men are uh, more reluctant to go to the doctor. But when the doctor's right there and it's free, and you can get that health screening and print it mm -hmm. out and tell you, you know, where your where your 
problem areas are or areas mm-hmm. of, of improvement that 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 can just be helpful and it's it's been a wonderful thing and the nice thing about it is that the person that has been in charge of it was the person in charge of the black family reunion celebration okay so i already had that rapport with her for 25 years she ran that thing and then she switched mm-hmm. up and she's now over at the health expo. So I got a nice rapport with her to be able to mm-hmm. interact. And and I get down there and 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 run the sound for the various, or at least Events. for the moving and grooving, for the okay. moving and grooving pavilion. Okay. But it's it's a real nice event. And it's it's like I said, it's more than race, it's just about being healthy. It is, it is about being healthy. I will say this as a black man, I'm concerned about black men. But hmm, but my, yeah. my my listeners are a wide range of everybody around the world. I've I've spent time building up uh, a fan base that they know where I'm coming from. But mm-hmm. I would just go on record and say again, our black brothers, we need to go to the doctor. Yeah. You need to get yourself checked up. You don't need yep. to wait for an emergency room visit. Right. You need to get yourself checked out. You need, no to, you need to be healthy for your for your family. You need to be healthy for your wife or your or your lady or your whatever, your family, your kids, your grandkids. Be healthy. They need us. Mm-hmm. They need That's us. That's right. That's right. If you're um, still here, then God still got a plan for you. 100%. You, you. you may not recognize what that plan is, and it may not come out till next year. But if you ain't here, you mm-hmm. can't fulfill that mission. Gotcha. 100%. Well, Amen yeah. on that. Uh, tell me a little bit about uh, your perception of, like, I guess, artists in the local R&B, hip hop, rap scene in, in Cincinnati, Ohio. I th- I think it's I think it's good. I think that there are venues available, even though they just tore down the Mad Frog. That's that was yeah, a, man. Oh, man. I saw the vacancy when I was there, bro. Man, that's uh, uh, I saw the yeah. empty plot of land. Yeah, yeah. The, the the Mad Frog was a was a staple of of the local music scene diet. Uh, <laughs> but it, it's it seems like that there are, like I said before a lot of folks that are are easily able to burst upon the scene with with the low low price of admission, low cost of admission. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it, and it seems like venues are are seemingly receptive that cuz it always seems like something's going on. I constantly some see some kind of mm-hmm. flyer about yeah. some new 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 venue or new show that they're having uh-huh. they they got a whole host of of people on the show. Right. So it seems to it seems to be healthy. I don't know if I'm able to pull out any names that that I necessarily recognize, but like uh, um, tribe. Who is that? That's uh, that Siri Amani. Oh, Siri Amani. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, she does her thing with her tribe, uh-huh. and and I've I've seen that in in person, and it is it is inspiring. Yeah, yeah I've uh, seen. Uh at least a couple of their performances live and I see their activity on social media. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think they, uh, they're, they're making a, a significant impact. Those kids are the kind of the kids that I'm seeing where they're getting uh, access to stuff that we didn't have. Um, mm-hmm. It seems that the city is more willing to work with them than they were mm-hmm. willing to work with the artists back in the nineties. And that's a mm-hmm. good thing. That's mm-hmm. a good thing. Mm-hmm. I, I, I like their music. Um, Siri Amani, I like her music. Uh, there's a couple other artists I could think of uh, that run around with that same crew, like Devin Burgess. Uh, mm-hmm. um, it's a few. It's a few others that escape my mind right now. Yeah, but I, I see. I see a lot of good potential, and I and I, what I also see is community within them. They don't have that yeah. same yeah. adverse and uh, competitive uh, or negative com- competitive spirit that a lot of the artists had back in the '90s. Yeah, it was. It's- you know, they they seem to be more working together to actually mm-hmm. push each other forward. I don't see them in fighting with each other, kind of how we had our this is that crew, that's your crew. We don't mm. make you know? yeah. And so I like to see that. I like to see more unity amongst those creative kids that I that I've been seeing personally. Um, whenever I'm in town, I do try to catch something that's going on just to see how they're doing. And I always feel good when I check them out. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's a we- different, it's a different feeling. Most there. And I went to a, a show, one of the places, one of the venues that seemed to be real receptive and 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 has has, has some kind of fluid entertainment kind of vibe going on. It's mm-hmm. Revel Winery downtown. Okay. I've not and heard of it. It's a real nice spot. Mm-hmm. It's not that big, but it's and it's a winery, but you know, mm-hmm. it's got this upstairs area. And I remember being there and and 
Siri Armani was was there performing, but the backbone or the 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 organization behind that event mm -hmm. was a really nice. I forgot the name of it, but it was a little tight knit organization and they gave me a little card and they had they was giving away like little weird stuff like they had a c not weird not that the cd is weird right but you know they was giving away cds and just the little stuff they were doing i was amazed they, they were selling t-shirts but they didn't have the t-shirts there you just they just had an ipad and you just fill out your thing and they get shipped to you and get shipped direct shipment you know and i, yeah. I mean i've seen that before yeah as I, I i know that kind of thing exists but it was just interesting to see it right there on the spot they right. had a couple of samples and mm -hmm. i'm like wow that's that's genius like it is like, yeah you know yeah I mean? it is like they're 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 being more much more resourceful mm -hmm. than i mm -hmm. that i remember a lot of artists back then being uh and and that's what i mean it's like they're using the technology in the right ways they're actually understanding what it takes to market and the content that they're creating and stuff like that and i'm seeing like i know a couple of artists that i heard um from cincinnati they got actual some some really good international attention, uh, which is what I always focus on with the artists I work on. And I'm hearing their names from people that I'm talking to overseas. Mm, and mm. it's a kid from Cincinnati. Mm, so I, I, I think that's pretty dope. Um, well, you, you know, speaking of um, uh, when I was talking about like them selling them T-shirts, I just mm -hmm. I just saw a story, man, that was there was a inspiring story. of mm -hmm. a, um used to be Christian rapper called D-Mob. Man, Not what is, yeah, he's uh he's behind good company. Donnie D Mob that, Harper. Is that the good clothing company yes. that I see the logo? Okay. Yeah. And he just he just he just testified, man, that he he went to he has his own clothing line mm -hmm. and he wears exclusively his own clothing line. Yeah. And he talked about how he went to a, a comedy show of one of his favorite comedians and mm. that when he went to that show somebody just shouted him out in the audience hey wow. he got his own clothing line he rapped too and so nice. the comedian said well come <laughs> up after this set and rap right and that he went up there and not only did he to perform but he said that because he had on his own clothing line that mm -hmm. he could say i have on my own i have my own clothing line and i'm wearing it right now yeah and just a, and able to promote that to that different audience was just mm -hmm. um yeah you know uh, being on time you, you ain't got to get get ready because you stay ready exactly yeah me and my wife have our own clothing line as well oh, I, okay. I wear my own gear everywhere um and, and that's in addition to the merchandise i sell for the artists and stuff that i work with but we have a legitimate fitness line uh right right so I, i'm i'm wearing an ovacious t-shirt i don't have my own clothing line maybe i should i don't know but uh i got this ovacious t-shirt and my, my friend of mine hayward thompson comedian hayward j thompson okay uh, known from from netflix specials and paramount I think Paramount Plus Plus specials or anyway, radio and TV oh, right. and, and entertainment has a little company called Ovations Entertainment. I shouldn't say little company, has a company called Ovations Entertainment. And here lately they've been doing monthly shows the last Friday in each month down at a place called Radio Artifact, uh -huh. which which when and if the next time you get you you come up here, uh, I keep promoting Cincinnati, like you might say, you know what, I might move yeah. back. Not that you would. Just saying. Well, no, I, I, I still have a place in Cincinnati. Okay, uh, okay. I still have a place. I've, I've actually been to Radio Artifact, but continue. Oh, okay, right, right. So, yeah. uh, so for, for those who are unfamiliar, man, Radio yeah. Artifact is like the truth, man. Like, I, yeah, I, I'm it's not a good sure. environment. I'm not sure of your experience, but that has been one of, if not the best place that I've DJed at. Yeah, they it, just it's the cool vibe what they did over there. Man, it it's is. it's a whole production studio hiding under the church. Mm -hmm. And so they they get down, they record the sessions, and um, they'll have the recorded content like before we even leave the venue. They're like, "Here you go," or That's you know, send you a, a link. Here you go. It's all yeah. Here's it. That's dope. I like I'm that. Like man, them guys. They two thumbs up for that. <laughs> man, <laughs> that is dope. Yeah, yeah. So, um, what would you say in your career as a DJ and and just who you are, a man about town? What have been some of the challenges you faced in doing your job in uh, making the impact on the community that you have made? So 
I'll say some some of the some of the little things that have been personally uh, rewarding. I'll 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 mention that. Which uh, one time I did a a class reunion for a class. I think it was 1975 might have been the, the graduating class. Mm-hmm. It could have been 76. But at that time, I think the maybe the number one song was the theme from SWAT. Okay. And so there, you know, they're all mulling around or whatever, dancing a little bit here and there. Mm-hmm. But then I played the theme from SWAT. Mm-hmm. And there was a gentleman there that was that was disabled. Mm-hmm. And he was in a wheelchair and he was like, he had the look on his face like, that's my jam. <laughs> and he just rolled himself out there on the dance floor and just. Oh, wow. Stood up and just. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that was, that was, it wasn't a dry eye in the house. Oh, you know? wow. Wow. Um, but uh, <laughs> as far as, as challenging challenges. Some of the time and, and working at the Black Family Union, the Young Adults Pavilion, early on, we would do things like we would have a safe sex game show mm. where you had to answer questions about safe sex and mm. you know, we'd give out condoms or whatever, or and, and not that necessarily sex was the you know the, the main thing down there, but that was just one right. of the segments. Right. And I remember we had radio talk down there. We we had some some radio DJs and, mm-hmm. and different promoters come down, and the the audience could ask them questions. And we tried to do a lot of things that that were edutaining. Mm-hmm. But one of the challenges was just that sometimes people wouldn't show up. Mm-hmm. There there would be some real dynamic content mm-hmm. happening right there live, and they're they're down in the park somewhere hmm. and so one of the things we we would do is we just whatever the, the hot song was we just turn up the speakers and play that hot song and then ah, and then they come back they oh, come wow. running hmm. they come running but when they done ran and sat down okay well you you, you tired now we, we got you and right. we and, and and tell them look we just want to let you know that we got this content for you and the only thing that brought you back was the music you know, we need to be aware of these kinds of things that happen, yeah. that it's not always about gyrations of the hips, that yes. a lot of times it can be stimulation of the mind. Correct. And and when you talk about the challenge, that that was a, one of the challenges was going from WAIF to WIZF. Hmm. WAIF, 88.3 FM in Cincinnati, what radio is meant to be, like you said, in, in some ways that it, it is that, what radio is meant to be. Yeah, you it was are, you, communal. You, yeah. You are your program director, your music director, your your board op. You are everything. And, and yeah. it is what you make it. Mm-hmm. And so when I felt like I was cultivating something, and I think I interviewed over at the Wiz eight times because I, I just wanted to get paid. Like I, you know, yeah, right. I'm doing this, but I want to mm-hmm. get paid for it. And when I went over there, they told me that I couldn't do my st- sh- show on WAIF anymore. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that kind of hurt. But I guess I understood. Mm-hmm. But I remember my last show, I cried. I cried on the air at because I 88.3? Yes, at 88.3, mm-hmm. I cried on the air because I felt like I was leaving whatever tight knit community that we had there. Mm-hmm. It was a it was it was a tight knit group of lions. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I felt like I was going yeah. to the bigger organization and have a bigger mm-hmm. audience. And no, I'm not trying to disrespect the community, but it was a bigger audience of lambs, ah, uh, sheep, yeah. And so it it is it is often difficult for me when I when I think about what happens on commu- commercial radio, because maybe I'm a, a visionary, or maybe I'm an idealist, or maybe I'm a all hopeless, of the above, <laughs> a hopeless <laughs> romantic, all of all that, all of the that, above. <laughs> that I, I used to think of of maybe just teaching college courses on radio hmm. because I kind of believe in the magic of, and at that time I believe in the magic of radio that that you could be at the DMV you hmm. could be in your car you could be in your shower and wherever you are that radio frequency that that station could tie us all together listening right, right. and StoryCorps has something like that. They say that's the greatest gift that you can give is the gift of listening. 
Mm, uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> but I thought about that, like you're listening and that there are opportunities to, that, to not just shove entertainment in your ear, mm -hmm. but shove education in your brain. Information, as you said earlier, edutain, yeah. Yeah. edutain infotain, Man, edutain, I, yeah. I, I used to come up with those ideas and they say, you know what? You might want to take your ideas to another station. I'm like, oh, uh, thank you very much. I went over there, went from 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 community radio to commercial radio. And mm -hmm. that was a challenge that they said, you not only can you not do your shift over there at the other station, we don't want you to use your name because it would it would tarnish the image of our radio station. Wow. I was like. I was like, damn, so. So you saying that I've been doing damage down there? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's why y'all want doing me anyway. Damage, yeah. and uh, <laughs> that's why they want you shut me down. You know, they they wanted you to not use your own name. Yeah, yeah. And so Ooh. for a while, I became Tony Fowler. <laughs> Tony Fowler, and it's a, it's a few people that know. You know what I mean? That listen. That hold up! Hold up! Hold up! Yeah. Hold up. On the Wiz, you were Tony Fowler. Tony Fowler, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And uh, what year? What year was that? <laughs> that had to be. Um, that had to be like ninety four. <laughs> like ninety four. I did not know that, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had no idea. Yeah, yeah but I, I didn't really listen to the radio a lot back yeah. then. But yeah. wow, hell no. Oh, but man. then when when they finally got another. Oh man, they got another <laughs> program director. And, uh -huh. Or program director and music director, and they say, "Hey, what can I do for you?" Right. And I said, "Let me use my own name." Mm. And they said, "Okay, but you know what? Let me back up. Before I came up with that Tony Fowler, I was sitting there, which mm. I don't know if you recognize the name, Freddie Red." Yes. Yes. Okay. So I'm sitting there, and I'm, I'm, you know, kind of venting, like, "Yeah, man, I can't use my name," and yeah, blah blah blah. I don't know. They didn't want me to use Moses. Not that it matters, but Moses is my son's middle name. I'm thinking, well, if I can't promote myself, maybe I can promote somebody, right? Mm -hmm. And so they said, well, now nah, you can't use Moses because that's like blasphemy. I'm like, not really. If if that's my name, how right. am I blaspheming? Well, if you play bump and grind and then you say you're Moses, I'm like, okay, whatever. So I'm brainstorming and I'm sitting in there with mm -hmm. Freddie Red and I'm like, and he's like, well, you know, what's your? I was like, well, maybe I could I could use my middle name. He said, well, what's your middle name? My middle name is Caesar. Mm -hmm. It's like Caesar. I said, yeah. He said, that's an odd name or whatever he said. And I was like, yeah. And I told him, yeah, I was named after the doctor that delivered me. My mm -hmm. parents didn't want it to be my first name, but they gave it to me as my middle name. Mm -hmm. He said, the, the doctor that delivered you? I said, yeah. His first name is Caesar? Well, that's my dad. Wow. So Freddie Red's father is Dr. Caesar Bissett, the okay. first black gynecologist and Tuskegee Airman to set up shop here in the city of Cincinnati. Wow. And he he delivered so many people around the area. Dr. Caesar Bissett. He didn't pass away, so may he rest in peace. So, so now rest I got a uh, you know, I got a um <laughs> I got a brother, uh, okay. Freddie Red, yeah, and a yeah. and a sister, Cherie. That's set, wild, man. You know? That's wild. Yeah. Small world, man. Small yeah, oh, world. Yeah, real small world. Yeah. It's funny how uh the generation lines inter intersect like that. Mm -hmm. That's that's pretty dope. Um, what else do you think? Uh, because I kind you kind of answered my stuff. What else, what else would you like to talk about that uh maybe you think the people should be uh know knowing about, concerned about anything, or anything you want to promote? Well, um, I, I, I'll, I'll be, I'll be cautious in, in, yeah, I'll, I'll be cautious with this, this topic that I've already mentioned and I, um, I want to be cautious with it. Okay. So it's the Black Family Reunion Celebration. Mm -hmm. The Midwestern Regional Black Family Reunion Celebration is, is the full name that it originally came with. As mm -hmm. I mentioned, I've been involved with the Young Adults Pavilion since its inception, since the beginning. I'm no longer a young adult. I do have tribal knowledge though. Mm -hmm. And and I have a foundation of sound equipment and 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 the knowledge of how things run and work. But I personally believe 
that if it's a young adults pavilion, kind of like FUBU for us, by us, that mm -hmm. maybe young adults should be part of that planning committee mm -hmm. and determine what kind of things do they want to see on the stage. Right. And what kind of, in the, in the same way that we, and I, you know, I was in my twenties, you know, so I'm mm -hmm. a young adult. Yeah. And I'm, I'm creeping up and I didn't grew up out of it because mm -hmm. like I say, on the next birthday, I'll be 60. Okay. But I remember a time where I'm kind of reaching and there was a question about who could they bring to perform. Right. And this was, man, this might've been 10 years ago. Well, five or 10 years ago, I brought mm -hmm. up two names. Gotcha. I said, Afro, all flows reach out. I don't know if, you, mm -hmm. if you're familiar with that. Not movie. familiar. Not familiar. Okay. I'll, I'll check him out, though. Yeah. All flows reach out. Afro. Okay. And at that time, he's a young dude. He's still a young dude. I saw him on Jimmy Fallon. He did this thing called Box of Freestyle. Jimmy Fallon mm -hmm. brought out a, just a box of random objects and pulled them out mm -hmm. and, and do what freestyle about. Oh, okay. And and he was a young dude. And, and according to him, he was just a kind of a little social, awkward, stayed in the house, read the dictionary. Mm -hmm. and, and got the heightened sense of vocabulary and right. rhyme rhyme time be able to spit mm -hmm. fire at a at any given moment uh, right. so i mentioned him i mentioned hey how about afro mm -hmm. and then i also mentioned d1 i know d1 okay right so d, for those yeah. don't d1 eighth grade school teacher one of his his students got shot and he felt inspired wrote wrote some rhymes and and he has just kind of elevated throughout the industry yes. as a as a clean christian rapper Correct. So and, and and at that time, both of them were still kind of young, mm -hmm. however old they are now. You know, they were five years younger five years ago. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned them and no disrespect to the artists that they picked, but they they just said, nah, we don't know them and just cast them off. Mm -hmm. And I was like, OK, well, there's value in. And so. They picked Lantana. Local and artists. I mean, Lantana's cool. You know, mm -hmm. he's from round the way. He's from Lantana. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, but his hit song is All Hustle, No Luck. And that's right. not necessarily in, in any, if, if anything, I thought he should have been on the main stage. Mm -hmm. You know, and then all, again, Young Adults Pavilion, one of the things that they brought was Lando's old school happy hour. Mm -hmm. And to me, I felt like, well, it's in the name. Young Adult Pavilion. Mm -hmm. Lando's old school happy hour. There's like a there's a juxtaposition yeah. there. There's exactly a, that we're at odds. Mm -hmm. And then the national artist that they brought to the Young Adults Pavilion right. was um Sunshine Anderson. I remember her. Yeah. Do, do, so and this might have been 2021 mm -hmm. when this happened. But her hit. Her number one hit, heard it all before. Heard it all before, yeah. Was, Produ was produced by Mike City, yeah. Okay, was yeah. 2001. So it was 20 Correct. years prior. Right. And I didn't understand, and this is no disrespect to anyone in the planning committee or wherever, because I am not part of that. Mm -hmm. But I'm just not understanding where this, this trickle-down economics <laughs> is coming from. And I really right. feel like there should be an influx of young people making these decisions or at least being at the table. And I don't know if they are, but I think that they should be. If 100%. they are, I don't see the evidence of that. And I'm I'm happy to keep keep working until they until they get tired of me. But I but think do you think they're just out of touch or I I don't, don't care know. or I, I don't know and I, I don't and even if I did I don't know if I would want to speak on it. Gotcha. And and I like I said I'll keep working until they till they throw me out of there until they get tired of me. Mm -hmm. But it is definitely not about me, in my opinion. It is about the event. How can right. we make this ex event successful? Because every time I talk to somebody, they're like, oh, yeah, we used to go to the Black family. Oh, I remember back when. Yeah. And it's always yeah. that. And, and it's not like, oh, I'm excited to go. Yeah, yeah. And we had, and I can't take, I can't take credit for this in its entirety at all. David Bright, DJ Rude. Mm -hmm. That there was a point where I was chairman of the of the Young Adults Pavilion. Mm -hmm. I passed it down to David Bright, and there were other people involved. And what they started was a process of auditions. 
Well, we always had auditions, but they kind of fine tuned it. Right. So to break it down, first two weeks of June, mm -hmm. public service announcement. You let people know that the last two weeks of June are going to be auditions for the upcoming Black Fan Reunion in August. Right. Okay. So my thought in the first weekend of June or the first two weeks of June, folks mm -hmm. just getting out of school or whatever. It's the beginning of the summer. You are alerting them that something is coming up at the end of the summer and the Black Family Unit is right. going to be back. So you, right. you you hit the market running with your advertisements, your PSA, your public service announcement, all that. And then when the people come for those two auditions, mm -hmm. and at times it was up to 150 entries. Hmm. So those two weeks happen. Then you got little Pookie and them. Mama, <laughs> mama, I, I auditioned for the, so you got this instant 150 family street team mm -hmm. that's running out to go tell their friends and family that they just auditioned for the Black Family Reunion and they might be in it. And so you can ride that wave for a while. Right. And then we would record it, review it, and then you'd make the phone calls. And in addition to that, we're gathering all this information. We're telling them ahead of time, like, look, no twerking, no this. This is a mm -hmm. family show. You're planting the seed of goodness ahead of time to let them know. So we have no surprises. Right. Also, they've auditioned. So you have right. an idea of what's coming. Correct. So then you got the phone calls that you make. And that happens, you know, since the, all this stuff happened in June, the mm -hmm. phone calls happened in July. Got and the, the people get excited. <gasps> you know and they yeah. often running more excited street team but all of that was relatively inexpensive to do mm -hmm. if i remember i think there was a 200 dollars rental fee 100 dollars per week mm -hmm. for the ym for the west end ymc is it's ca is where it used to be the auditions yes okay west end ymc and it was there for years okay and for some reason after after the, the, the new management came in, they just decided not to do auditions. And I just find that a little challenging. And I don't quite understand that, in my opinion, we have a, a, a well-oiled working machine. Turnkey mm -hmm. operation. Here you go. So they're just blindly booking talent? I, I, I can't speak on that. Um, but I, I, I'm just not sure that sometimes when, when we turn on the mic, we we're not sure what we're going to get. That's not good. I and I, not, and I not I, not for a family event. That's not good. <laughs> and um, I I don't want to necessarily speak negatively of it because it's still a wonderful event. There's a mm -hmm. whole lot going on, and maybe maybe the perception is I have already sp spoken negatively of it. I mm -hmm. don't mean that. I, if if any if I am if I'm criticizing or critiquing. I, I am coming from a place of love because I right. love what the event has done for me and for the community. I mm -hmm. should probably just take me out of that. I just love what the, the event has done for the community over the right. decades. Yeah. And, and I would like to see that continue. Mm -hmm. And so whatever, whatever, you know, there's a, there's a website, my black family org. There's mm -hmm. options there to volunteer and be a part. And I would cur encourage anyone and everyone who has a chance to to listen and, and and absorb this message and consume this content. If you're in the Cincinnati, Ohio area, and if you're going to be here in and or around the third weekend of August 2024 and beyond, go to myblackfamilyunion.org, find the link to volunteer and to be be a part, help build the, the message that is that is that is being broadcast to the community. We will add that link in the uh, in the uh, comments of this of this, uh, so it'll appear on the YouTube channel. It'll appear on iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts. You know, all all of them, all of the podcasts. I'll put the link in there and put all your links in there. <laughs> I expect nothing less from Power Blast Worldwide. Hey, that's right. <laughs> Shout out to iHeartRadio. Oh, man, yeah, yes, yes. I promise, man. Look, listen, listen. As far as you, yeah. You know, I I've heard. I mean, I know you and and in the same spirit that you talked about how we, you know, we bumped into each other at, at mm -hmm. some event. Right. I was I was at them events and that's that sounds typical. I don't fair, yeah. fair, fair warning. I don't remember that interaction. But I remember the interactions constantly with you and ML. Y'all would just yeah. like slide up like power blast. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
I, I knew you wouldn't remember that first meeting. Oh, oh, it, wait. There, I don't wait. think you did. I don't think. Wait you... a minute, because it would have. Correct me if I'm wrong. It would have been bomb threat. Yes, it was bomb threat. Bomb yeah. threat, right? And yeah. then y'all had to make a change because. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like everybody did. Yeah, Secret yeah. Service had to change the, the, the Secret Service is the uh, repair shop around here. They had to change the, their name. Yeah, man. Yeah. After yeah. after nine eleven, everything went yeah. down. Everything went crazy back then. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, man. Um, we're we're moving, man. Um, been through a lot, you know. Been through a whole lot. Uh, hey. I know you want to interview me now. <laughs> well, hey, I, well, I just I just wanted to make mention that yeah. um that from knowing you 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 mm -hmm. from knowing ML from bumping yeah. into him just randomly at Kroger's right you know the other day and and just we have been on a similar path. We may mm -hmm. not have been in the same vehicle. Correct. You know what I mean? But but yeah. like entertainment here in Cincinnati, how it works yeah. or whatever, you kind of know. Oh, I know. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, they doing that over there. I'm I'm not right. sure, but yeah, yeah. Hey, what's up, man? Yeah, kind of yeah. like that from afar. Exactly. But listening to the most recent uh, thing that I heard from you, the, the two things uh, over there at Destroy All Podcasts. Shout out to them. Shout out to Destroy All Podcasts five one three. And and I heard where you was talking about. Yeah, I got to start a podcast. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the seeds are being planted. You know, and I don't know if that they necessarily plan the seed because you know you you you. No, shiny. I was I was already working on it anyway. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Johnny apple seed. You planting all kinds of seeds. That just kind of uh sparked the immediacy of the flame. It was in plant. <laughs> it was in the planting stage. <laughs> uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I heard that. Yeah. And and not to not to not to tap into it other than because I don't I don't want to I don't want to bring up no. But anyway, no, just, do it, man. Do it. Just no, sir. No, sir. Do I'm it. just saying that <laughs> the information that you provided on there was just so thorough and inspiring. And 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 the energy that you come with it was, you know, it's like, let me let me just spread this out for you. Let me let me yeah. give you this spread these lyrical dishes in your bushes. Whatever yeah. you was doing, it was yeah. just it was it was free flowing and if anybody out there has a chance, you know, they should definitely tune in to Destroy All Podcasts, especially the definitely. episode with Gino Black, because it, it was very, very thorough and um, informative. And and I guess in the same kind of, of lane that Chris Paul's original posts mm -hmm. for the Midwestern Disc Jockey Coalition, the origin okay. of that, of how sometimes folks... Um, work together or or don't work together correct um and and or the little example where i just gave let me move to the side where i said oh yeah they over there i, I see them over there <laughs> yeah they doing stuff yeah 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 and, and and like you hinted to that some of the artists of today mm -hmm. seem to be they seem to have a different kind of camaraderie they do versus versus back in in our time there was not necessarily com camaraderie Maybe with some, but it also seemed like that there was animosity. There was extreme animosity, envy, and jealousy. Yeah. Uh, and those are emotions that I don't have. I don't understand those emotions. Mm, man. Uh, I, I experienced them. They are projected upon me, but mm. I've never I've never been jealous or envious of anybody. If mm, anything, mm -hmm. I've been a seeker of knowledge. Uh, like I mentioned on the podcast, uh, I had two two uncles who mentored me and they unknowingly mentored me. But I watched mm. everything that they did to learn to be the man that I am. Um, and essentially, when I see somebody that has something that I want or is at a level that I want to be at or at a, a status or whatever it is, and not necessarily material possessions, but just in position, mm -hmm. I don't hate on them. I mm. converse with them. Mm, mm, gain the knowledge right find right. out how they got it and yeah what yeah yeah steps they took <laughs> i've always fancied myself to be a seeker of knowledge and just like you said uh about your time uh, uh wizf fm when you're trying to have some fresh ideas they're trying to shut you down yeah that that was my problem in the city of cincinnati not with my own crew but with us trying to interface with the other separate uh little groups or whatever they didn't want to listen to any new fresh ideas. Mm, mm, and, mm. and that's why we became more successful than them. Mm, mm. Dig that. Yeah. Yeah. That's 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 um that's unfortunately where we have where we have been here. And yeah. uh hopefully, hopefully we grow out of this. I I I was um 
I think the kids are the the, the <clears throat> excuse me the younger generation of some of the artists we spoke about earlier. I think they are they have less of that envy and more of a cultivating and we're all going to do this together. Like, it seems like they want to be the ones that have Cincinnati have its moment, kind of like Atlanta, kind of like LA, kind of like Seattle got for the grunge movement back in the 90s. They want to put Cincinnati on the map. Mm. Uh, this most of what I've seen uh, in my time in Cincinnati in the hip hop scene was every man for himself. We don't want to work together. Or if you make East Coast rap, you can't hang out with the guys that make West Coast rap, mm. or you mm. can't do it with somebody that makes gangster rap or Southern rap or whatever. Mm. We don't, we only do this. But I also found that those guys that only wanted to pretend like they were from New York, where are they now? What are they doing now? <laughs> They're still making the same demo tapes with a basement and garage full of equipment. Mm. And they and, and have nothing to show for it but day jobs. Mm. <clears throat> mm. Ouch. Yeah. <laughs> day jobs. Oh, man, a hit they, dog will holler and they'll be in the uh, comment section like, <laughs> they do it. Yeah, they do it all the time. And, I, and I'll say it again for the cheap seats. I started working for myself a long time ago. Wow. I've man. been punched the clock and I don't know how long. Mm, mm, that's great, man. That's that's inspirational. Power Blast is sustainable. Uh shout out to ML. Uh and uh yeah, man, we we just always tried to be collaborative. And a lot mm. of people didn't want to collaborate with us. Mm. I, I don't know whether and because I, I didn't really care about was this group better than ours or was this MC better than me or one of my guys, my concern was trying to uplift everybody. Mm, 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 mm. And because my ideas were so new and radical, because I've always, before before even putting together Bomb Dirt, I was kind of a loner. I did my solo stuff first. And I've always been the guy. I was that kid also reading the dictionary all the time, like you mentioned mm. about that other young man. Mm -hmm. So in addition to reading the, the dictionaries, I was also reading books, every book mm. I could get my hands on. Um, so I was LLC Power Blast Worldwide in 1992. Mm. Mm, so, take that. Yeah, so we've been going for a while. We got a distribution deal in 99. Mm. Um, took some time off. Uh, that's that's around the town when I left Cincinnati. Took some time off and uh, did some corporate work for a while and did well in that environment as well. I mean, it's just like you say, certain stuff is just in you. Yeah. yeah and yeah. so I move every way. I move with the intent to kind of dominate that that field that I was in. So I was in the telecommunications industry for a while <clears throat> on the sales and management level, raised my family. And that was another thing, man. While, while we were in the nineties doing all that stuff, running around, doing all those pop-up shows. And we were also traveling too. We were going to other mm. States doing shows, but I was married with kids. Mm, mm. And, I, and that's why I didn't. That's tough. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. I was married with that's, kids. Mm. Um, and those, that's a whole nother job. That's a whole nother job. <laughs> whole nother job. And I had yeah. I had the recording studio at that time. I did have a full time job and I was doing the music stuff. Mm, mm. And I'm also trying to help other people. I was managing and signing other artists. Mm. So if anybody and then going back to that that thing, and this is my show. So I'll say his name G Fresh going back to that thing. <laughs> uh, how can I? Oh, man. Be the negative aspect of the city when I was trying to help people up. I was offering other artists contracts to come under my label to help them advance their careers. That's what I was doing in the 90s. And when I saw people weren't ready to play real ball, I left. And I even offered several people to come with me because mm -hmm. I set up shop in Miami with a, a full size loan. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, you know, it, it's it's uh, it's interesting that that is, that is a business it, loan. Yeah, I, I heard that episode. I, the, I was the uh, entertainment business loan. Uh, you know, it's interesting, man. When I when I did the little gesture where I say, you know, I look over there and I see somebody in the lane. Mm -hmm. Not sure what's going on in that car, but I know them people over there. Right. Uh, another little analogy or sometimes a little story I tell is that if I'm driving down the street. And my, my passenger window is open. I stop at the light. Sitting at the bus stop, I see the devil. Mm -hmm. The devil's sitting at the bus stop, and he got a, a gas can. I am not making reference to anybody being a devil in this particular story, right? Gotcha. So, And the devil, hey, 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 man. You you going to the bottom of the hill? Can, can you help me out? I right. just, I, my, my car ran out of gas. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'm in. Right? In theory, I don't necessarily know who the devil is, right? So we, we right. drive down to the, to the 
and he and we get to the bottom of the hill where the gas station mm-hmm. is. He hop out the car like, hey, man, hey, 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 thanks a lot, man. And he just fling a five dollar bill in the window. Mm-hmm. For me, that is my limited experience with the devil. Right. And I'm like, well, he was cool, man. He... <laughs> right, right. He right. gave me five. He gave us gas money. Everybody else might be like, no, you don't know. Because because of the different right. experience. That exactly. Had. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. And that's that's unfortunate, man, because I find I appreciate your kind words that you said about me in the beginning of the show where you said I that. that. I, the, the, and I appreciate that. I meant that, bro. And same thing and, you said about me. Meant that. Yes, sir. Same. But, but I find myself in those kinds of precarious situations where like I'm mm-hmm. cool with someone over here and I'm cool with so oh but y'all don't oh how could yeah I don't know but yeah. you know I I'll, I'll say something else man that, that um in 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 this day and time it seems like um maybe that is true when you talk about the the camaraderie that is around mm-hmm. a situation happened it wasn't really a situation but on Saturday this past Saturday uh I went down town to the outdoor skating rink i seem to be keep coming back to skating but i went down there that's your new groove i guess yeah hey i've been skating since uh don't say since uh united skates of america roller world before that oh (laughs) we're both showing our age now (laughs) i put a year on it so it at the time of this recording which is 2024 Mm -hmm. i've been skating since 1975 damn so, uh, <laughs> but so, so the dude that I was talking about, Dylan Morton, the, the mm-hmm. world class, world traveling young guy, young right. guy, he was doing his debut to DJ. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh man. So I, I'd already kind of knew him, bumped into him, and we cool and, you know, we dap up or whatever. And I said, well, let me go down here and see, see little dude, whatever, DJ. Mm-hmm. And so he's down there, you know, he's doing his thing. I'm like, oh, yeah, go. Um, but, Sidebar, when I look right in the booth, they had like a maybe uh, it could have been about 12 or 14 inches tall, mm-hmm. a Bose speaker that was on a stand. And okay. it was a, a little weird. I think it was a SP1, maybe. Uh, you know, not that I need to necessarily Is get it a little them. little sound bar. Uh n- no, it uh let me get the uh the model it may not necessarily be important bose s1 pro plus portable bluetooth speaker okay so it's about maybe 14 inches high Mm -hmm. 12 inches wide it might have an eight inch woofer in it Mm -hmm. and that's right by the dj booth Mm -hmm. then they had another one oh maybe a hundred feet away on the other side of the ring Mm -hmm. that's it yeah man so the sound was like (laughs) and and i came down there and i was giving my man encouragement like hey man nice to see you dj i didn't know you dj man great you know (laughs) and but i kind of looked around i was like what is going on 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 and i don't know something fell apart they didn't somebody didn't bring nothing and that was Hmm. from the ladies house I don't know. And so Vader was coming up next. Mm-hmm. And so Vader came and he he wasn't he wasn't shy about the look. He was like, hmm. oh man. And he said, I had some speakers sitting by the front door. I walked past them. Hmm. I should have brought them. But there was man. enough time that this whole thing, the camaraderie thing, he mm-hmm. was like, you know what? I'm gonna go back home. I was like, bet. Yeah. You come back, I'll help. And so he came back, you know, and I helped. You know, we hey, let's get it together. You know, yeah, we all yeah, yeah. we we did the thing and got all four speakers running. Mm-hmm. Didn't really need it. But and and not that that was necessarily given the sound that it was needed, because I, I think maybe but it was 10 times better. Right. The point it is was, the com- the camaraderie, the, right. the the brotherhood, so to speak. Yep. And and but, we just made it happen. And 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 then when he was leaving, I was telling him, man, and I, I wanted to start crying because mm. of all of this beauty that I'm seeing that's happening in the city. 
Mm-hmm. And and it 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 may not be. It may be me looking through rose colored or or old colored <laughs> <laughs> old colored glasses. Yeah. But it does really seem like there's so much more happening and 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 it's um whatever foundation that was laid down by let's say Power Blast mm-hmm. in the 90s that folks now are building upon that taking notes That's glad and, to hear it. and doing things from a from a different perspective a different perspective of of camaraderie versus animosity yes and it's it's really wonderful to see there seems like every week there's some new thing this whole thing they're doing with the 3 cdc friday flow yes yes they that's what i'm hearing about all yeah. the times yeah. man they do salsa on the square reggae is it reggae in washington park but they have such salsa reggae um for a while we was doing lion dancing in the park mm-hmm. you know just a lot seems to be going on a lot of activity and entertainment that mm-hmm. is um it's a little heartwarming. It's 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 uh overwhelming and heartwarming to see, you know. I'm glad to hear it because I've been hearing those things and I and when I'm in town, I see signs of those things. So mm-hmm. it's it's looking much more promising. Yeah. And honestly, I think we should end that on that high note. The things okay. in the city okay. are looking promising. Unless you had anything else. I got nothing, man. I'm just I'm just happy to be here. Hey, bro. Thank you for coming on the show. Everybody, again, this is Music Therapy and Motivation with your host, Gino Black. I've had the absolute pleasure of sitting down and shopping it up with DJ Butch Gibson. Mr. Butch Gibson, <laughs> as I introduced him before, this man has, has many hats he wears in the community. He is well-loved and respected by myself and everybody back home. I uh, appreciate you for coming on the show, brother. Thank you. The pleasure's all mine, sir. Thank you, brother. I'll be in touch. Yes, sir. I'm floating, motivate. I'm floating on, elevate. I'm floating over you, and ain't nothing you can do. I'm floating, motivate. I'm floating on, elevate. I'm floating over you, and ain't nothing you can do. Everybody want to put it on the game. How you walk, how you talk, you know the slang. You really should deliver it plain. Because, motherfucker, I know you were lame. Go ahead.